Good afternoon. My name is Carmen Lopez Soto and I'm a consultant in critical care at King's College Hospital in London. I would like to start by thanking the organizers for the opportunity to present such an interesting topic. Um, and um, for the next few minutes, we will aim to uh, present an update on fluid management in neurocritical care. The primary focus of neurocritical care, as you all know, is to minimize secondary brain injury. And to do so, the therapeutic goals will uh, aim to provide adequate fluid um, cerebral blood, blood flow and maintaining oxygenation in those areas at risk of injury. Uh, fluid therapy is fundamental in the management of neurocritical care patients, and both general and specific fluid management have been associated with playing a role in the potential outcome, outcomes of this population. The focus of this talk will be to unpack the general fluid management, both during the, the resuscitation and um, when we use fluids as maintenance. If we were to summarize how general fluid management may affect and interconnect with an injured brain, these slides, these slides sorry, um, that may look quite complex captures most of the different interconnections. Explaining each one of these will take up the time of this talk. So um, I've summarized it in these four key messages, which are that fluid tonicity will, will affect the brain tissue. The tissue edema, edema re will result in worse oxygenation and diffusion um, and an impaired cerebral blood flow. And uh, basic care in brain injury can have a potential impact on outcome. Um, therefore, optimizing cerebral blood flow can pose more challenges than systemic blood flow. Um, as we all know, uh, administering fluids or giving fluids remains the most common intervention in medicine, in acute medicine. And crystalloids crystal were found to be the most commonly used fluids for volume, volume resuscitation in trauma patients admitted, admitted with TBI. Um, I'm sure at this stage, one of the questions that you may be asking yourselves is, can crystalloid composition affect outcome? And I will try to answer that question in the next few slides. But first, I would like to, um, I would dare to say that the, the most common uh, fluid used for resuscitation in patients with TBI or other acute brain injuries is saline. And among the complications of using saline, um, hyperchloremia, acidosis, and AKI have been, have been described. There's two trials that look at whether that was the case when they compare saline and um, and balanced solutions. On the one side, we have the split trial that compares saline versus plasma light with a primary outcome of a development of AKI within 90 days in critical care patients. Um, their primary outcome was negative and, and mortality was negative too. The second trial looking into, looking into this topic was, um, was the SMART trial which compares saline versus balance solutions. Uh, both ringers and plasmide were included. And their primary outcome was to develop one or, um, one or more criteria for major adverse, adverse kidney events in 30 days. Um, what they found was that balance solutions had a lower all-cause mortality, uh, renal replacement therapy uh, need, and major renal adverse events. But their TBI populations on both um, of these studies were massively underrepresented. For the split trial, um, only 2 and 3% of, of patients, maximum 5% of patients were TBIs. And on the SMART trial, around the 30, sorry, the 16% were, um, were represented. Therefore, neurocritical care patients have been uh, historically underrepresented in big trials, looking at crystalloids, um, a type of crystalloids for outcomes. In terms of fluid management and general resuscitation, I'm going to, um, I, I've decided to divide the talk in two. On the one side, we'll, we'll talk about quite quickly and briefly about fluid manage, management and strategies. And on the other side, we'll focus a little bit more on fluid resuscitation strategies. And what I've done basically is uh, trying to look at 
um, and corroborate and, 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 and um, the expert panel um, uh, report published in 2018 under the umbrella of the ESICM looking at fluid therapy and neurointensive care. Uh, well, let's get to, to straight to the point with fluid maintenance, because I think these are the easiest ones, and I'll explain that in a, in a, in a while. Crystalloids um, have been preferred as maintenance fluids in neurocritical care patients. Colloids, glucose containing hypotonic solutions or albumin are not to be used as maintenance. And in terms of uh, volume status of the patient, we should target um, normal volemia during fluid replacement. All this is, all this is well and good, uh, but if you allow me to be controversial, um, I think that the best fluid maintenance strategy is a good ng fitted regime, which for pure acute brain injury patients, I don't think there is any major contraindication to not start ng fits within the first 24 hours. And of course, if, if the patients have suffered any other, um, any other um, trauma, like multi-traumas involving the abdomen, that might be compl more complex and, and we will have to look at the composition of, the, of, um, of how we're going to strategize our maintenance fluids or NG feedings to that extent. In terms of fluid resuscitation in TVI patients, it is worth remembering that, remembering that under resuscitation can lead to increased mortality in TVI patients. Crystalloids are the first line resuscitation fluid for TBI patients with low blood pressure. And that is what the ESICM consensus advocates. And that has been sustained by uh, several, uh, by, by, several um, by several studies. Uh, the most recent and the only single, uh, the, only, the only RCT I could find is this single center comparing Ringers versus saline for 48 hours. Interest, interestingly, they, they, they looked at the incidence of hyperchloremic acidosis um, and effectively balanced solutions didn't um, or reduce the incidence of hyperchloremic acidosis in these patients. I think the interesting point of this study, and even though it wasn't power for um, for it is the fact that ICP didn't seem to differ between these both groups. Um, so how about, um, how about um, hypertonic saline for resuscitation? Um, a recent uh, systematic review and meta-analysis looking into different fluids used for resuscitation uh, found uh, that fluid therapies in patients with severe TBI in the pre-hospital setting, um, they found, sorry, 11 studies comparing hypertonic saline and crystalloid. And uh, their, um, um, their um, outcome was that there was no survival or neurological benefit by using one particular other. And I think uh, that is a good reflection of what um, the 2018 consensus um, tell us, which is um, a suggestion against the use of hypertonic saline as a suscitation in a patients with low, low blood pressure. Okay, so hypertonic saline not fully or not, not fully favor, not with enough evidence to use, but how about crystalloids? Uh, there's one single center retrospective study that I could find reporting no association between cumulative dose and mortality in TBI. That goes in contrast with a couple at least of subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, studies that look at colloids being associated with worse outcomes when compared to crystalloids. I think that on the whole and as a balance, that's why the 2018 consensus suggested against the use of synthetic colloids or resuscitation fluids with uh, and patients with low blood pressure. Uh, right. Colloids and crystalloids have been crossed off and have not been proven completely right. Um, how about albumin? Um, the albumin, albumin remains um, an area on, of interest. Um, and there has been a lot of work, basically experimental, mostly experimental work um, uh, and small studies reporting some conflicting uh, results 
some of them in favor and some of them against the use of albumin. Unfortunately, when we translated this, um, this knowledge into a, a human population, and that was done on the SAFE trial in TBI patients. The SAFE trial in TBI patients is a postdoc analysis of the SAFE trial that compare albumin versus saline in acute resuscitation settings. In, in this case, they focus on the TBI patients, which they have more than 400 patients recruited. And what they show is that there is a higher mortality at 28 days and 24 months, and there's higher mortality in those with severe, more severe TBI that presented with a GCS of between three and eight. They pose a possible reason, which is that the, um, as, a, as a result of the increased vasogenic and cytotoxic cerebral edema, uh, the albumin will lead to an increase, will, will leak through the blood brain uh, barrier, therefore increasing the ICP. Um, that is why the um, ESICM consensus recommends against the use of low-dose albumin as resuscitation in phase with low BP. And they, they post as a weak recommendation uh, against the use of high-dose um, albumin because there are some experimental um, evidence that suggests that actually it could high-dose um, albumin could work. But yet we're still we haven't we haven't done any trials on, on patients and on, on humans, I'm afraid, or at least not that I could find. In summary, uh, crystalloids should be used as a first line resuscitation and maintenance fluids for neurocritical care patients. Colloids and hypotonic solutions should be avoided. I would say not at all, in all situations. Albumin use remains controversial and controversial against and currently is not recommended to be used in neurocritical care. Um, and we should aim for normal bulimia as the preferred target uh, for the neurocritically ill patients. With that, um, I would like to again, thank the organizers and uh, I could take any questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>